Hey guys, before we start with this video, I just want to warn you, this is over 25 minutes long. It is a very long in-depth review. It covers a lot of specific features about this. If you do not have that level of time and you want to focus on a much shorter review, uh, please click the link below. I have an overview that's closer to five minutes. It covers all the important features without diving into every single thing about it. However, if you're looking to learn about this product and everything it has to offer, continue watching. With that being said, here we go. Hey, what's going on guys? It's Joe from GadgetryTech.com and today we're reviewing the Lorex Smart 4K NVR security system. Um, basically, it is a, an improvement in many ways over your traditional surveillance system. They're, they're calling this a security system, um, not surveillance system. So I, I wanna highlight that because there's a couple nifty features that uh, this kit packs all without paying a premium. Uh, this model is the NK183-48AB. I'll put a model number on the video uh, in case you missed that, uh, but basically it retails for $750. The long story short is this kit can be configured in a few different ways. You can have it support anywhere from four to 16 cameras. You can buy different types of cameras. So whatever your configuration needs are, um, this, old, this review will hopefully help you understand, I, I guess, the basics of how this new system works. And then from there, pick the right cameras, um, configuration, capacity, all that good stuff. So uh, this model comes with a three terabyte hard drive, which is good for roughly 11 days of surveillance, local storage. I wanna point that out because there's no monthly fees with this. Um, the benefit of getting a, a system like a Lorex one is everything's included. You pay the 750 bucks in this case, that's the retail price, and you get four cameras, 4K theft, or not theft deterrent, but smart deterrent cameras. Uh, they have these little PTZ sirens that will audibly scream at uh, anything it detects if you configure it to do so. They also have these really nifty uh, white floodlights. So if there's motion detection at night, you can have them turn on. Uh, there, are, there is infrared night vision, so we'll just quickly touch on that. It's not like it needs a floodlight. Um, it's more there for deterrence, which is again, why it's called a security system. Uh, so the NVR aspect, that comes from network video recorders. So the advantage to this is it uses power over ethernet. Uh, it's important to know there's two major differences with home surveillance systems. You either have the traditional DVRs that have coaxial cable and power. Um, it's more of a, um, it's the old school method of, of, I guess, setting up cameras. But to support the latest resolution and technology, everything is going towards NVR, which is what this is. NVR is nice because you have a single ethernet cable like this, which is included. They give you one for each camera. These are 100 feet long and they have tamper resistant uh, screw terminals, if you will, once you clip it in. That'll help with weather uh, resistance and people unplugging it. Um, but anyway, the advantage of power over ethernet is everything is included in that one cable. The other advantage is it has a very high data transfer rate. Um, so I, I gotta get to the point here. So basically there is so much packed into this unit for $750. I've had to re-record this video several times because there's only so much you can jam in into one video before it turns into this two hour full-fledged film that is not going to keep a lot of people. This particular kit at $750 comes with four cameras. As you see on the box, they are the smart deterrence cameras. We'll go into how those install and connect in a little bit. The back of this is an eight channel and I love this kit because you could start with the four channel kit, which is again, four cameras, and if you decide you needed a different camera or an additional camera, you can purchase just that one or two extra camera, plug that into the back, and this will have enough juice to power for or, or eight cameras. Um, the three terabyte drive that's inside is from Seagate. It's their surveillance technology drive. Basically, it's designed to run 24 seven with constant reads and writes, et cetera. Super important for durability. Um, while I focus on the back, they do include a little mouse. This does have an HDMI output, so you can connect it to any monitor. If you have an older monitor you want to use, it does have VGA, although keep in mind you won't get the higher quality video output um, that the 1080p and the 4K uh, video recording supports. So this does record at 4K. It's at 15 frames per second, and it uses two, uh, different codec options. If you enable H.265, the advantage to that is you get the same picture quality is H.264, but with half the file size requirements. So one of the advantages of the smart security system from Lorex is that it's using the latest technology to get you phenomenal picture quality, more storage space, all without spending extra money because now you don't need a six terabyte DVR. You can get away with a three terabyte and still get 10 or 11 days, you know, according to the box. So um, I've actually exceeded that. So this part of the review, I've already used this for a month now. Um, 
I've exceeded that. I actually get about 14 days on average, which is excellent. That's using uh, 4K at 15 frames per second, H.265. You, if you want faster frame rate, you can. You can actually set it to 1080p at 30 frames per second. So if you uh, prefer the motion um, tracking capability of a higher frame rate, you can do that. Um, but I like the resolution. So the advantage with 4K at this, I've had the ability to uh, capture license plates of vehicles driving by the house as they take the turn. Um, when you get packages delivered, you can see very clearly what's being delivered. There's no blur or question on, on who's who. And naturally, the big reason why people get this is if there's an intruder or someone on your property, you want to be able to see their face clearly. So that is the specs, uh, or those are the specs, if you will. 4K, night vision. Um, it has the floodlights on the cameras, these little white illuminations for motion detection. There is a siren. The sirens can be activated on a schedule with motion detection events. You can turn on the sirens with your app. You can even press the panic button on the front. This button right here is not a power button. This, I thought it was at first, um, and I misspoke when I first covered this, but basically if you hold that down, every connected camera will blast their siren if it's a theft or a security deterrence camera. That's extremely loud. I do not recommend doing that unless you absolutely have to. The idea of that is to draw attention to your house and hopefully scare away the intruder. So anyway, um, you get a lot in this box. Honestly, for the price, it's a phenomenal product. We're going to go into, um, I guess, focusing on how to install a camera. We'll show you the advantage of the way they designed their little hinge mechanism to make it so you can install your camera any way you want. And then we'll go ahead and show you the NVR picture quality, how to use it, switch to the app, and then we'll give you our final thoughts at the end. And hopefully you find this review helpful. Okay, so when installing these cameras to the house or whatever location you're putting them on, it's important to choose the right hardware. And even though Lorex was nice enough to provide uh, some basic drywall anchors, those aren't always the best solution uh, for stucco or vinyl siding or whatever your uh, particular location might require. So with my house, because we had a pre-wire done, I had reinforced metal plates put in along with this, um, basically this weatherproofing, if you will. These little foam pads will help keep the moisture out from getting inside. Um, but however, once mounted, um, the plate is very secure. We have these grade eight steel screws and they use Torx bit, which are harder uh, to remove because not many people carry a Torx screwdriver on them. So again, factor that into tamper proof screws or screws that require a unique bit might help make it harder for someone to steal or uh, unscrew the camera. Once installed, um, I do want to point this out. You have three screws here. If you loosen this screw a lot, the entire camera can pop off of the mounting plate, which makes it easier to install in your home. That way you don't scratch the camera if you're using a drill uh, and you're worried about, you know, rumping up against it. However, once all these screws are loose, you get a lot of adjustment. Because there's three uh, locations or three points of rotation, you can rotate the entire assembly on the plate. You can change the angle and you can rotate the camera on the final uh, pivot point. So what that means is if it's on the side of the house, and here we go, because we left this loose. If it's on the side of the house like this, I can rotate the camera. So the lights are on the bottom, which is the bottom of the camera. And I can still point towards the front of the home, which we're going to be doing in this location. However, if I want a straight shot, I can rotate all the hinges and that allows the camera to point down. So you have a lot of adjustability. Um, I like that they include it. The only thing you want to factor in is if you mount this yourself and you uh, don't have a predetermined location, Make sure if you, let's say, are on the side of the house and you want to aim a particular direction, that you don't recess it so far back that the wall creates a blind spot because the camera can't see around the corner. So once you factor that in, you should be good to go. Uh, and again, just pick the right hardware. We're going to go ahead and mount one of these cameras on the side of the house now and show you how simple it is. Okay, so now that it's mounted on the wall, all I have to do is check either my mobile app or the NVR screen if it's hooked up to a monitor and make sure I can get in the camera angle I want. From there, it's kind of a little bit of trial and error to get the right picture. The mobile app is nice because I can watch the camera live. And when I do that, I can adjust it in real time. So we're gonna pull it up right now. It loads pretty quick. I'm gonna switch cameras here. And there we go, the new screen is there. So that's loading now. I'm gonna watch the live view and then that'll tell me yeah, see, that's really good. If anything, I can point it down a little bit. Perfect. And now I just have to tighten it like that. And that's actually going to cover, because the field of view on these cameras are so wide, um, I have a lot of coverage here. It looks like it's pointing really low at the ground, but I'm actually still getting um, even what a seven foot tall man, if it came around the corner, I'd still actually get that angle because of the way this is set up. That's the motion detection alert going off again because I haven't set up that grid yet uh, to make sure that I'm not getting false alerts. 
Okay, so now that I've used the mobile app to determine I have the right angles and I'm happy with the way the camera's looking, it's time to go back inside. We're gonna mess around with the NVR and set up our detection zones, the uh, alerts, all of that stuff to make it perform the way I want it to and kind of fine tune it. So once we're done with that, then we'll play around more with the mobile app. We'll test its performance and reliability and then we'll give you our final thoughts at the end. Okay, so now it's time to take just a little bit of time to give you an overview of the NVR's video output. This is a live capture output of the NVR itself. Uh, we're not using the web interface, so I just wanted to point that out because this is exactly how it would look on a monitor if you connected to it. The fourth camera is currently disconnected because it's uh, in the garage, so for privacy reasons, of course, I'm gonna leave that off. Um, I'm sure you can understand that. So just wanted to point out a few things. This, first off, this system is basically plug and play. Uh, you just wanna set your admin password, default username is admin, uh, but you wanna customize the password because it is exposed to the internet and you don't wanna leave default passwords on on any device that's exposed to the internet. So with that being said, once you've done that, you're gonna see a live camera feed of all the cameras that it detects and are connected. Um, you'll have to uh, make sure that the count matches up, of course, otherwise you may have a wiring issue. But once it's up, the interface and usability is very straightforward. If you use the included mouse, which we're doing here, I can click on a video feed and it makes it full screen. If I click again, and this is left click, it backs back up to the multi view. Now I can even use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out on multiple feeds at once and drag it around. And it works pretty straightforward. As you can tell, there's no problems with it. Uh, everything works exactly as expected. Uh, if I right click anywhere on the screen, it'll pull up this uh, contextual menu, or if you're inside a menu, right clicking will back out. Okay, now it's time to focus on what I think is the most important part of the configuration outside of setting the password. So we're gonna right click and click main menu, and then click this little um, hammer and screwdriver icon for the settings, and let's go to event. This is where you can detect or configure motion detection events and the smart motion detect, which is the SMD. So for motion detect, um, this is basically your generic motion detect zone. It has nothing to do with um, if it detects a person or a vehicle. Um, basically, it's just if there's motion in there, it'll flag it as a motion event and that's it. So this is set up like that. If you want to add zones, you can drag and hold and highlight multiple squares. If you want to remove multiple squares, you can drag and hold in the same area or you can click uh, different spots that you care about and do not care about. So uh, pretty easy to set up. We're gonna right click to exit this area. Um, video loss, I'll spend just a second on here. So basically if you have um, a camera signal failure, uh, you can set it to either show a message on the DVR, send an email, um, so you know that a feed is no longer coming in. Uh, the SMD, the smart motion detect, this is where you can set rules for people or vehicles or both. Checkmark means that rule is enabled. Area is basically going to show us this little trapezoid. Um, I can click and drag these corners to set the alert. So if there are any people within this yellow trapezoid right here, um, it will let me know and I can act accordingly. If there are any vehicles, then I click on the second rule. And again, this only cares about if there are vehicles inside this region. Obviously, I doubt there'll be a vehicle on this side, but... Um, this also should have a pretty low error rate as well. So we're going to click OK and that's done. Now the schedule, if we care about having uh, detection events only at certain times of day, you can set it for that. That way you get less false alarms. Um, another interesting thing is the, uh, the warning light, if you will, not strobe, but warning light is a solid white LED floodlight on the camera. There are two white LEDs per camera in this kit. Um, if it detects motion in the evenings, for example, when it's darker outside, uh, these lights will turn on for 10 seconds at a time, uh, showing or bringing extra attention to the camera to say, hey, you know, we see the motion, which helps to act as a deterrence. Um, strobe will flash. That's a bit more intense. Um, I think the warning light and not, it does quite a bit on its own, which is good. So I just wanted to point that out because um, it's, it's important to know where to configure that. If you don't set this correctly, again, like I said, you're going to have a lot of false alarms that you don't care about. So another thing I want to show you is because we set those zones, if you right click and click on smart search, now I can say, hey, I want to look at events on between 420 and 421. I only care about, you know, let's just again stick with camera two, just as an example, and I only care about vehicles. So now it's going to search that day for all vehicle events. I'm going to hit smart search. And look how amazing this is. Uh, I don't have to go through hours and hours of playback, zooming in and out, fumbling around. Um, 
If there was an issue where something happened in your driveway, a person may have broken into a car, just search by all person detection events in that time window and you can find exactly when it happened. It saves you a ton of time. I can click this and live preview that event happening. If I want to export it or save it, whether it be to send to law enforcement or because I don't want to lose the clip, I can hit save and it'll save it. Um, you can save it to a flash drive basically. Um, if I put a check mark here, I'll show you how this works. So I'd have to plug in a drive uh, and you can choose where to save it to. You can even choose the format uh, of the video itself. Um, if you want to do pictures, pictures or video. And again, I'll right click to back out. So this is the power of setting motion detection events. Uh, I wanted to point that out because I think that's absolutely amazing. It saves you so much time. Anyone that goes through the standard playback software, uh, which is good because sometimes you want to look back in time um, and not miss anything. So this can still give you literally every minute. And as you can tell on the calendar in the top right, I have recordings going back all the way to the 9th of April, which is awesome. Um, that's quite a big uh, stretch back in time. And it was raining that day. So picture quality is good. Um, you can, again, zoom in and out. You can focus on just the different types of detection events that you see at the bottom here. Any motion or smart motion, which is the zones that you create. So uh, that works extremely well. We'll right click out of this. And I think that covers it. The only thing I can show you is if you um, manually set views, you can choose what camera you want to prioritize. If you go to view eight, that goes, does one large screen and all of your other cameras will be on smaller screens. Clicking one of the smaller ones will make that the primary and blow it up. Uh, right clicking again, we can go to view four and either do cameras one through four or five through eight. This particular product supports up to eight cameras. We're obviously only using four, so we're gonna leave it at one through four and we're back to the normal view. So again, um, set your zones, reduce the false alarms. You will be very happy with that. Um, and now we're gonna pivot over to the uh, smartphone app and show you where the overlap is and how well that works. All right, guys, now it's time to test the motion detection capability using the Lorex deterrence surveillance system with the Lorex Home app, and we're gonna compare that to the Google Nest doorbell that's mounted in the same location. It's a little windy out here, so I apologize. Uh, just to let you know, we're not using Wi-Fi. I'm using the cellular network because I wanna maximize the amount of latency because if you're not home, it's nice to know that the alerts are coming through quickly and that you're not uh, missing out on something. So with that being said, we're recording the screen on the phone. We're gonna have that overlaid on the uh, video that you're watching now. Uh, and let's walk around the corner and see how everything performs. See who's faster. So I just took the corner now. I haven't even touched the doorbell yet. And okay, so I just approached the doorbell. I didn't ring it. So the Lorex has already detected it. And I'm still waiting, and there we go, and then Google. So you can tell there's a little bit of a delay there. The Lorex, I've tested this a lot. This isn't a one-time thing, and if you ever have both, I'm sure you're gonna to come to the same conclusion. Um, there's pros and cons of using both devices, of course. Um, but with the Google Nest, it's always slower than the Lorex Home app. I've never once had the Google Nest doorbell alert me before the Lorex, and I'm not even hitting the doorbell on the Google. Um, you know, the fact that I can take the corner and set it off before it, it rings. Um, uh, set off the Lorex detection before I can ring the doorbell in most cases is pretty amazing. And again, this is on Wi-Fi where the latency is, is maximized. Okay, so now we're gonna show you again another high level overview of the app. Um, I'm a firm believer in hardware first, software second, as far as um, what the initial investment should be because you, can, you have to start with good hardware and the software can always get better. But if you buy a cheap product that gives you poor video performance, uh, or reliability, it's not going to be worth it. So uh, one thing I want to point out just while we're here, um, this particular view shows you the last time the uh, screen was opened, like a thumbnail capture of the video feed, the last time you were live viewing. So it could be daytime. And if it's uh, the last time you recorded it was at night, it'll still look like it's at nighttime. So kind of an interesting thing. Um, but I wanted to point that out. So if I click driveway, it's going to open up. And look at that, now I have the driveway. I can hit pinch to zoom, which is really cool, I like that. And then the little HD button here in the middle, I can tap that and switch to SD. So depending on your network speed, you can uh, change the picture quality. And as you can tell, look at how blurry that looks. So we're gonna switch it to HD on the phone. And now all of a sudden it's much more clear and you can benefit from that 4K view. The other thing I wanna point out as I zoom out here, 
If I want live view of multiple cameras, I can tap where the little one is to the left of HD, and that will load multiple camera feeds at once, which is awesome, and it does support horizontal multi-camera feeds. So the software is, once you learn those basics of navigation, it's pretty awesome. When you click on a video feed, let's go back to single, Oh, don't want nine. You can turn the microphone on and off, if you, and we're gonna leave that off for privacy and uh, legality reasons, but you can turn the microphone on and off. You can see these icons on the bottom here, one of them being the camera. If you wanna take a screenshot, I can tap that, done. I can turn my microphone on so the person on the other end, because these cameras have speakers built in, I can use my phone app to talk to the exterior camera, which is really awesome as well. If you see something going on outside and you don't want to go back through the NVR software um, as far as viewing goes, you can tap this button on the right and it'll record and highlight a video clip. So you can save that again for future, uh, future use. These bottom icons, so you have the floodlight if you want to turn the floodlight on. The bottom left I do not recommend pressing unless you absolutely need, need to. That is the PTZ or whatever alarm. Uh, it's a very loud alarm uh, that will scare and stress people out. So we're gonna leave that off. Uh, there's a panic button on the NVR itself that will actually allow you to set the alarm on on all cameras connected at the same time. That gets extremely loud. If I click on timeline here, it's telling me how to use it and you can scroll forward and back. You can choose what date you wanna see uh, for what's available and look at this. I can go all the way back to the ninth and let's let that load. And I want you to see how fast this is. It, I've, I haven't had any issues with this timing out or crashing or saying video not available. It's always worked. And, it, and you can see just how fluid that really is. So the software works extremely well. Again, it's not the prettiest looking stuff, but it functions where it matters. And that's being able to take pictures, record, talk back, set the alarm, view the history, et cetera. And you can see the little label on the bottom left of the feed. So I love that. Uh, these uh, vertical bars that you see, these are events. So if you recall earlier, we discussed uh, setting event zones for vehicles and people. If it detected any, it'll highlight that here. Um, there's motion detect as a whole, which will not alert you. And then there are zone alerts, um, which will be either a different color or depending on the overlap, you may only see one, um, but it's important to point out. So overall, uh, app works extremely well. Uh, there's always room for improvement. I think... Um, having the ability to see multiple icons vertically here instead of having to scroll. Uh, they do this because if you have more than one NVR or more than one Lorax product, um, you'll be able to list them all here. And you can see the feeds from the product or each individual product that's attached to it. When you only have one product that's attached to it, there's a little bit of wasted space, so I'm not a huge fan of that. So let's click on activities and there it is. So I can look at the alert history and see everything that got detected as an alert, whether it be people, cars, whatever it may be, and it picks it up no problem. So if I click this, this will get me pulling in earlier. That was for the, the coffee run, of course. And it's as easy as that. It's not a long clip, but this is basically the preceding 10 seconds that led to that motion detection alert. So um, it's important to know because if you miss an alert or accidentally swipe away the notification, you can just view these activities on your app and you're good to go. So that is the app in a nutshell. Again, it works extremely well. The reason why I love, uh, love that SD HD feature and why I wanted to point this out, you can stream HD on your cellular uh, network because of the H.265 encoding. It doesn't require a ton of bandwidth. However, if you have spotty connection or just want to buffer it very quickly, just go in SD mode and you can be on the other side of the country uh, or in a different country as long as you have internet access and you can still get a live feed of your cameras at home uh, pretty quickly. So... Uh, all in all, the app works extremely well. It's been very stable, and I think it's a, a very important thing to consider when looking at a surveillance system for your house. Okay, guys, so that wraps up the review of the Lorax Smart 4K NVR security system. Again, this is $750. You get four cameras. They all have the LED and the deterrent uh, lights on them with the little sirens. You have three terabytes of storage, which is good for 11 days. Uh, anyway, so there's a lot of different configuration options. So even though if this system might not be perfect for you, they have some that are um, a couple hundred dollars less than this, and they have some systems that go in the thousands. So depending on how many cameras you need, the form factor of the cameras, what uh, storage capacity, etc., there should be a Lorex system for you. The main uh, takeaway from this is hopefully this addresses any feature concerns, how to use the system, etc. 
And I hope you found that helpful. So if you have any questions, as always, please shoot me a comment below. I'll be happy to answer them for you. And please subscribe because we have tons of new content that we continue to push out, ranging from gaming, computing, audio, security equipment, etc. So thank you guys. I will see you next time.